Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can anytime during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1, FM 90. Hello and welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizitro. On Spectrum tonight, the quest for safe, secure, uh, safe and secure social security in Uganda. What is the latest as the country moves to address this matter? One of the key challenges Uganda is facing today is the lack of a comprehensive social security mechanism beyond the pension arrangement at the Ministry of Public Service and the National Social Security Fund, or NSSF. The current arrangements only cater for civil servants who can access pension and gratuity when they retire and workers in the formal sector who save through the NSSF. As a result, many people are left out of the pension and social security sector, yet they deserve to have care, especially when they are no longer active. This year, government, through the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, will begin implementing the expanding social protection program, which targets only the vulnerable, including uh, the elderly, and orphans. Efforts to have the pension and social security sector liberalized were launched last year, but some key stakeholders believe that there are issues that need to be addressed. So tonight, we will look at the pension and social security sector in Uganda to try and understand the latest in the efforts to improve this situation. Our guests tonight, Honorable Suleiman Madada, State Minister for Disability and the Elderly. You're most welcome. Honorable Thank you Madada. very much. Good evening, listener. We are also joined by Mr. Wilson Asha, who is Chairman General of the NOTO, that's the National Organization of Trade Unions in Uganda. You're most welcome, Mr. Oera. Well, thank you very much, uh, Edmond. And uh, I thank the listeners of Radio 1. All right, Honorable Madada, let's begin by, can you, can you tell us this so expanded social protection program? It was supposed to be launched around election time. What happened to it? Let me start by giving a small background and introduction to this. You have already alluded to what we call social protection. These are measures concerned to address risk and vulnerability. In the Ugandan context, within the former and public sector, there are core social protection instruments. This would include the social assistance. In social assistance, we are talking about regular and uh, predictable transfers in terms of cash in kind to provide the guaranteed income support. But there are also social insurance. This social insurance provides income support on the basis of previous individual employer contributions to mitigate, uh, to make, uh, mitigate the impacts of income shocks. But the other uh, measure is social welfare services. This include provision of personal care and protection for vulnerable individuals who are unable to, feel, uh, to fully care for themselves. This include reception centers of abandoned children, community-based rehabilitation for persons with disability. Now, why do we have social protection? We have just to look at the global development agenda. Today we are talking about a, capital, a capitalistic world where survival is for the fittest. The, the, the forces of market, uh, demand and supply will determine what goes on. But for purposes of ensuring that there is a group of people who cannot compete favorably in the open market, uh, the world over is talking about equalization of opportunities. Uh, UN and uh, a UN resolution of 1993 put up what we call a, a equalization standard of opportunities. When you come to the Uganda's contest and our development objectives and directive principles of state policy, you look at uh, the right to development as one of the issues. And they are talking about government has a responsibility to put in place legislation and conducive environment for everybody to benefit out of the development agenda. So what happens? The Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, one of our key areas in our mandate is to ensure social protection, that is to protect the rights of the vulnerable groups, including the uh, women, children, orphans, elderly, and all other categories of the vulnerable groups. Now, we have been trying to have interventions uh, to make sure that everybody uh, enjoys the development arena. 
but there is a certain category of people who are colonically poor and what do we mean by colonical, uh, being colonically poor about 20 percent of the households in Uganda are living below poverty line and 26 percent of the total population are colonically poor people that is about 7 million people so you talk about poverty but they are also colonial poor and one of the characteristics of colonial poverty is that you pass on poverty from one generation to another so any serious government will need to have to stop that continued sack of poverty yes. so what is happening under SEDGE SEDGE is a program in full to mean social assistance grant for empowerment uh, we are expanding the social protection by introducing that program. This program is targeting uh, uh, to reach uh, older persons who are 60 years, 65 years and above, but also vulnerable uh, families. What do we mean by vulnerable families? Family, uh, families that have are headed by children you have a family where the head of the family is below 18 but you have also families headed by people with multiple disabilities these people are likely not to benefit from government interventions to address poverty why the, most of the government interventions to address poverty are targeting the active poor what do I mean by active poor? People who are still able to work. But there are people who cannot even work, even if you put money in the circles, in programs of Bonavaga Gaure Prosperity for All, you introduce programs like UPE, that is one also an intervention of uh, social protection. But you get a grandmother who has a child who cannot afford going to school, despite the free education because of lack of uniform or above soap to wash uh, this uniform. So, as a ministry responsible for affirmative action, after a number and a thorough study, we came out with what we call SEDGE. Here we are targeting, already I've told you, older person 65 years, 65 years, 65 and above, and we'll be giving them 22,000 monthly. Every month? Every month. Yes. And households that have those categories of persons I've talked about, the orphans heading families, the widows, uh, persons with the multiple disabilities, and of course the question would be, how would be the selection? How did you reach at this level? And we are beginning with a pilot. We are not moving the whole country at large. We are beginning on second this next month, next month, September, and we are going to begin the districts of Kabila Maido, Chiboga, and Chenjejo. The launch here is going now to demonstrate what we've been planning all along. We are going to be giving a money card to the beneficiaries. We have already identified the beneficiaries, and they will be receiving money for the first time in their life. Of course, the other challenge people would be talking about is that we are now introducing handouts and people would make people lazy. We've had such... But these are above 65 already. Yeah, they are above 65. Not only that, but even children who are not even in the productive sector. Right. So we are targeting people who are not in the productive sector, but those who are supposed to be cared for. I've already told you that in our population, there is a lot, already a growing gap of inequality because of the capitalistic tendencies, and you cannot do it away unless you have some other interventions. As we talk today, of the 20, it is only 20% 20 of the population, the richest, are holding about 45% of the riches of this country. And of the 20% of the poorest are only holding about 0 0.9 something. This is very dangerous to this country. So we have to address that growing inequality. And when you define today what you call poverty, it is not merely talking about issues of levels of income, but we are talking about all issues of exclusion. So what we are doing is to exclude everybody in the development arena. So this is what is being planned, and we are not encouraging any laziness, but we are targeting a population that even if these programs were there, they would not be benefiting. Secondly, this is one way to address issues of poverty. First of all, 
these older persons and those in the families have to depend on those working population, people who are working. By providing for them, we will we'll leave you have a burden to continuously be serving this type of population. That's one way. But it also it is also an economic stimulant because you are now managing to give somebody purchasing power to be able to go to the market and get something. Therefore, the markets are created. We have looked at this elsewhere. We've gone out elsewhere. We have looked at Lesotho. We have looked at Zambia. We've looked at South Africa. We've looked at many African countries who are really getting out of this and they are making a change in their life. So this is the type of program that we are coming out with. And we want to call upon all Ugandans to embrace this program because many times uh, people begin uh, discrediting a program before understanding why this program is here. We are going to get out and want to uh, call upon you, the media practitioners, to help us to explain these issues to the public. This is what we are coming out with. The Minister of Gender is not going to implement this program alone. We are implementing it with the local governments and the, those first local governments, the eight local governments, we have already signed memorandum of understanding with these districts. We have also signed a memorandum of understanding with the Minister of Local Government just to ensure that uh, they have a responsibility, first of all, to monitor that program, but also to help second their staff to this program. We have already recruited our teams in this field, but we also want local government to be part of what this, uh, this program will be happening. The other point that has always come out uh, in many faces of Ugandans, they talk about corruption, that now the man has come and now yes. the ministers will be ready, and I know that was you, you, maybe your next question. Well. We have put in place a number of measures uh, out of the uh, old experience to ensure that this money does not go to the wrong beneficiaries. First of all, we have used existing data to identify these people. But we have also gone down to the communities to compare what we have with the local leaders. But secondly, we have also made what we call an information management system that is IT compliant. In fact, what is going to happen is that at every level, your name is computerized and even your th uh, thumbprint is computerized. Yes. When you go there, you press your thumbprint before you are paid. And we, are, we have engaged private uh, people to deliver this money. We are working with mobile money. We are working with also mobile banking. And we are starting with the MTN mobile money to be able to deliver this money to okay. the beneficiaries. All right. I think I've given you yeah, some bit of background. background and uh, therefore we should be discussing within that contest. All right. I mean, you say 20% uh, of the people hold 45% of the wealth. Uh, in some places, actually, 20% hold 80% of the wealth in other countries. So we're not really, really that bad. Yet. Maybe we don't want to go there, but that's one reality. Then the other thing is about selection. Very briefly, there's a former uh, mm. prime minister. He was had given money for orphans, and he was accused, rightly or wrongly, of touching this money. He was about 80 years old, and he actually said he, too, was an orphan. I hope you'll avoid this kind of thing. Let's talk to you, Mr. Well, talk to us about... <laughs> Uh, well, he at 80, he didn't have parents. Had, uh, <laughs> Mr. Well, what do you think about this project? Is it a good thing? Or will it make people... Mm, first of all, I want to thank the Honorable Minister, and I want to thank the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Uh, but there is a lot of contradiction within the government, in a way that this is a very good program, the, but the contradiction comes like this. You know, social security protection is a mandate of Minister of Labor, which actually the gender is now We're together. together. But now, part of it is now already in Minister of Finance. What do you mean? National Social Security Fund. Yes. You are aware. Go on. It has been taken away from Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Right. Now, the policy remains in the Ministry of uh, Labor, uh, Gender and Social Development. Now, the money is in, in the Ministry of Finance. Now, even the policy now, the formulation of the policy on social security 
it has been taken by the Minister of Finance. And, and you know these are physical planners. They, they are now contradicting the whole social security protection in this country. You know, we are moving towards a very good program whereby I would propose that the even National Social Security Fund would come back to what? To National, uh, to, to the Minister of, Minister of, of Labor, Labor and Gender and Social Development. But, but you find that now the bills which actually I'm requesting you, Honorable Minister, mm -hmm. the bill which is going to liberalize social security, that is pension scheme, should come to you. It should not be spearheaded by Minister of Finance because they are already, we they already suspect. As we talk now, I just want to go briefly on how NSSF is performing. Yes, NSSF has membership of five four hundred and fifty members. Five fifty thousand. Yes. Then uh, they have asset which have actually accumulated to two point one trillion. Yes. And then uh, that means they, they are contributing to the GDP about six percent. Yes. Now, when you come to other other investment, like the money they have in the bank is about nine hundred billion, which is within the, our economy. Yes. Uh, it, it, because I'm I'm trying to bring out something yes. that can help the government understand how our economy should be. Uh, actually uh, handled. Now, when you look at the real estates and the other investment which are here, all that money is within the country. Now, as we talk, the Minister of Finance wants to liberalize this money and leave it in the hands of the business people. Are you seeing that contradiction? Well, but and insurance companies are private businesses and they've been working. Most times insurance takes over social security. Th this is not the issue of insurance. You cannot place people's savings without government guaranteeing this money. So you're against the, the liberalization of the pension? We are not against it. We are saying the people who are handling it are not professional in social protection. The Prime Minister of Finance? Yes, they are physical they planners. Do. They should, gender, gender. They should be, even if now they don't take it to gender, but we want Minister of Labor, Gender and Social Devers Development to spearhead that bill. And Honorable Minister, for us as workers we are saying this bill should come back from Parliament and be discussed with we, we the stakeholder, the stakeholder. not with the biggest trade union yes not to is a big trade union but even the workers the people who are saving this money because government is not even they don't even have a shilling in NSSF, in the NSSF. now how do you determine my destiny without you know, involving me right. are, are you getting my point right. now another thing is who will guarantee my money you, you you see the, the case of uh, Makerere yes. and Nick. Yes. Because Nick was a government body, the Makerere people entrusted them with the money. They put the money there. But after the, 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 the Nick was sold to private hand, yes. they are now getting a very big problem. Now, what is going to happen? It's going to contradict the policy of government, whereby you are saying you are not getting people out of poverty, but again, some people are trying to, down, to, to play with the policy and trying to put people who have saved for many years and they want to turn their money from provident fund to pension. Like now, uh, Edmund, you have saved your money. Me, I'm, I've reached, I'm almost uh, reaching time when I'm supposed to get my money in totality. Yes. Now, they are telling me that they will give me 33% and the rest in monthly and the rest in month installment. Have they consulted me? You know, these are contradictions which I want Honorable Minister to see. As much as you are pushing to get people out of poverty, to do things in a proper way, there are other people in other ministries who are contradicting the policy. So these are some of the things which I want the minister to know, the whole world to know. With effect from Monday, we are starting a serious campaign. If the government doesn't bring actually the bill down back to us, we're going to take it all. What do you mean? 
we are saying this is our money. Yes. We have been saving for more many, many times. That's true. And if you want to liberalize, then but they better talk to you first. They first talk to us. This is where we are going to resist any form of anybody trying to push us from where we are. We have now got our money. We are now at least we have uh, got out of uh, poverty. Yes. But if you want to drive us back, I'm okay. not going to accept. Right. So, Honorable Minister, we are trying to actually support your policy. But we are also telling you that as much as you are struggling to do that, there is something happening with the Minister of Finance. Which needs to be rectified. Exactly. Well, we'll get details on that. This is Spectrum. Listeners on Radio 1 tonight, the quest for safe, secure, uh, safe and secure social security in Uganda. What is the latest as the country moves to address this matter? Our guests tonight, Honorable Suleiman Madada, State Minister for Disability and the Elderly, and Mr. Wilson Oware, Chairman General of NOTU. We'll be back after this break. Let's show you how to multiply your savings, starting with the cash beneath the mattress to the savings in the bank that aren't making money. Let's turn your savings into some things with Super Save Reloaded. Super Save Reloaded brings you savings and investment accounts which offer you a sure and predictable way to multiply your savings. For more information about Super Save Reloaded, ask at your nearest Stanbic Bank branch. Stanbic Bank, moving forward. Three times a year, every year for the past six years, I have been stressed going to pay school fees. I've woken up at the crack of dawn, taken two taxis and a board. Finally arrived, filled out the forms. I have lined up between a guy with kabubuka and a guy with a nasty cough. <laughs> and I've waited and waited, but no more now. I have moved on with MTN mobile money. So now I pay school fees directly for my mobile while I spend time with my children. When you move on with MTN Mobile Money, your children can move on to greater things. And now, everyone can pay school fees with MTN Mobile Money. So, be one of the 100 people to win 100,000 shillings towards your next school shopping when you pay school fees with MTN Mobile Money. MTN. Everywhere you go. Ah, so class. We learned today that there is blue band original for spreading, cooking and baking and a new blue band spread for bread which is specially formulated for... Spreading! Oh, good. Uh -huh. Some people want a blue band original for spreading, cooking and baking. We know others want a new blue band spread for bread specially formulated for... Spreading! <laughs> and that is even good. We now have blue band original for spreading, cooking and baking and a new blue band spread for bread for... Spreading! Blue Band now gives you a choice. Blue Band original for spreading, cooking and baking. And new Blue Band spread for bread, which is specially formulated for spreading, making it more affordable. Therefore, if you have the new Blue Band spread for bread and you spread it on the bread, that means you are doing what? Hey, hey, spreading! <laughs> daily Blue Band, daily growth. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanbic Bank. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. The quest, the quest for safe and secure social security in Uganda. What is the latest as the country moves to address this matter? Our guests tonight, Honorable Suleiman Matada, State Minister for Disability and the Elderly, and Mr. Wilson Away. Mr. Wilson Away, pardon me, Chairman General of the NOTU, that's the National Organization of Trade Unions. You'll also be able to discuss with us later. I'll read out the numbers when that time comes. Honorable Madada, we're talking about this expanded social protection program. He's been talking about social and security. talking about this area of selection. Yeah, let, let's talk about the funding. You've spoken to us a little bit about that. Let's talk about the criteria, but we'd also like to know who's funding it. Okay. Let me begin at the level of selecting which districts benefit. Because